Hello all, welcome back to this series on static timing analysis. So today we will we are going to discuss about clock uncertainties. Clock uncertainties. So in clock uncertainties, we will discuss the following uh, things. Uh, the possible clock uncertainties we are going to discuss. First one is latency, and second one is skew, and coming to third one which is jitter so we will discuss all this uh, variations in the clock signals and we will see what are this okay now our first discussion will be on clock latency clock latency so what is this clock latency actually okay so clock latency is also again divided into two types first one is clock source latency clock source latency and second one is clock network latency clock network latency so like this clock latency is also divided into two types first one is clock source latency and next one is clock network latency now let's see one by one so coming to first one that is clock source latency okay so what is this clock source latency so this clock, the definition for this clock source latency is the time it takes for a clock signal to propagate from its actual idle waveform origin point to the clock definition point in the design. Okay, so the time taken for a clock signal to propagate from its actual idle waveform origin point to the clock definition point. Uh, let us say this is where the clock is originated. Okay, this is called clock origin point. It may be any oscillator or anything. Okay. From the oscillator, the clock signal will be uh, generated like that. We will say so. This point is our clock origin point, and let's say this is our circuit. This is our circuit. Okay. So the clock source latency is the time it takes for the clock to travel from clock source origin point to the clock definition point in the region. So this time the clock takes to travel from this point this is this point is called origin point roughly i'm uh, explaining by drawing a uh, example and this point is called clock definition point clock definition So this is this time is called clock source latency. Clock source latency. So this is called clock source latency. Now coming to clock network latency. The second type is clock network latency. So coming to the definition of this clock network latency, it is nothing but the time it takes for a clock signal to propagate from the clock definition point to a register clock pin. So the time taken for the clock signal to propagate from the clock definition point, clock definition point to the clock definition point to the register clock pin, register clock pin. So this time is called clock network latency. This time is called clock network latency let's see by example here so this is our clock definition point right so from here let's say in the circuit we have some buffers or some not gates like this connected right so at the end if we have a register like this a register or flip-flop so the time it takes for the clock signal to propagate through all this uh, combinational circuit and reach the register clock pin this time is called clock network latency okay so the time it takes for a clock <clears throat> so the time it takes for a clock signal to propagate from the clock definition point to a register point register clock pin is called a clock network latency okay yeah so these are the clock latencies or the latencies in the uh, clock the second type is called as skew or clock skew. So we'll discuss about this clock skew. Coming to this clock skew, 
The definition of this clock skews difference between the arrival times of the clock at different devices is called clock skews. The difference in the the difference in the arrival times arrival times of the clock at different at different devices is called clock skew. Okay. So what is this? Uh, let us uh, see with this with an example. So let's say this is our D flip flop. We will take the example of our D flip flop Q, Q bar, D1, Q1, Q1 bar. And this is second flip flop D2, Q2, Q2 bar. Okay. Now let's say this is our clock. And here, let's say we have a buffer and this clock is given to this. So this is also. So this is the clock uh, originate point. Okay. So like this clock is given to first flip flop, flip, uh, flip flop one and flip flop two. Okay. So like this, the clock signal is given to our flip, our flip flop one and flip flop two. So the clock signal is directly given to flip flop one, whereas it is uh, given to flip flop two with the help of a uh, buffer. Okay, like this, uh, with the help of a buffer, it has been given. What is the definition we have? The difference between the arrival times of the clock at different devices is called clock skew. So the difference between the arrival times of different devices. So let's say the clock uh, to our flip flop one is reaching at time t one, and the clock. Uh, is reaching our flip flop two at time t two. Okay, so at time t two, the clock is reaching to our flip flop two, and at time t one, our clock is reaching to flip flop one. I will show it with a example uh, waveform here. So this is the clock which our flip flop one is receiving. Okay, so at time t one, I am getting my uh, first uh, first clock edge. Okay, this is time t one. This is for flip flop one. This is for flip flop one. Now, coming to flip flop two. This is flip flop one. Coming to flip flop two. What is it? So, uh, since we have introduced a buffer here, let's say this buffer has a propagation delay of uh, uh, some nanoseconds. Some delay it will introduce. Let's say two nanoseconds. It has a propagation delay. Okay. So because of this delay, uh, our flip flop two receives the clock with some delay. So by some delay, we will get the clock for flip flop two. So like this, our flip flop two will get the clock. Okay. Like this, we will get it. So this is the clock for our flip flop two. Now. So you can observe a delay here. You can observe a delay here. So this is at time t two. We are getting the clock for our flip flop two, and this is the time t one. We are getting the uh, clock for our flip flop one. So the how to calculate the skew? Uh, how to calculate the skew? So skew is given by difference between the time period, difference between the arrival times of clock at different devices. So difference between the arrival times when we are getting this uh, flip uh, clock to the flip flop two. That is at t two. We are getting the clock. And when we are getting at uh, to flip flop one, that is t one. So this is the skew. So the difference between the arrival times of the uh, clocks at different devices. So the difference between so the arrival time of uh, flip flop two is t two, and the arrival time of uh, flip flop one is t one. That is t two minus t one. We are getting the skew. Okay. So like this, we are going to calculate the skew of a uh, clock. Okay, clock skew. Now, now, so in clock skew again, it is divided into two types. One is called positive skew. First one is called positive skew, and second is called negative skew. So first is called positive skew, and second one is called negative skew. So before going into the difference, let's understand understand some terminologies. So we'll understand some of the terminologies like capture clock and uh, launch clock. So before that, we need to understand what is 
capture flip flop and what is launch flip flop okay so that they, uh, there are two types of devices one is called capture and second one is launch so let's see what is this capture and what is this launch flip flop so coming to the capture flip flop So coming to the capture flip flop, let me draw with an example here. So this is our flip flop one. I'm taking the example of a D flip flop only D1, Q1, Q1 bar and D2, Q2, Q2 bar. Okay. So like this, we have our two flip flops. So we have the clocks to this flip flop, synchronous flip flops. These are working with the same clock. So we will get the data. The Q1 is passed through some combinational logic and given to the D2. Okay. This is combinational circuit, some combinational circuit we have in between. So the direction of data is from D1 to D2, D1 flip flop to D2 flip flop. This is the direction of data. Okay. So you can observe the direction of data. The data is coming from uh, D1 and it is going to D2. So in this case, the D1 will become launch flip-flop, launch flip-flop. And the D2 is capturing the data which is being given by D1. So it is called capture flip-flop. So it is called as capture flip-flop. So this is the definition of launch flip-flop and capture flip-flop. So the clock signals associated with D1 and D2 also has is, has its own names. So the clock signal associated with D1 is called launch, sorry, cap, uh, launch clock, okay, launch clock. And the flip, uh, clock associated with this uh, capture flip-flop is called capture clock, okay. Now, what is this positive skew? Coming to this positive skew, when a positive skew will occur when data direction and clock direction are same, then we will get the positive skew. When data direction and, and uh, clock direction is same, then we will get a positive skew. For example, this is the case we have discussed, right? So here the data direction is from D1 to D2. You can observe the data direction is from D1 to D2. Here I'm not connected, but here the direction is from D1 to D2. And what is the clock direction? It is also from D1 to D2 only, okay? So the data direction is from D1 to D2 and clock direction is also from D1 to D2. So what you can observe is a positive skew. Okay. This is a positive skew. If the clock and data are moving in the same direction, then it is a positive skew. You can observe the arrival time of flip-flop 1 uh, is this T1 and the arrival time of flip-flop 2 is T2. Okay. So I'm writing it here. So the arrival time of Arrival time, I'm mentioning it with 80. So arrival time of uh, flip-flop 1 is my T1 and arrival time of flip-flop 2 is T2, okay? What is the flip-flop 1? It is a launch flip-flop, right? So arrival time of launch, uh, sorry, arrival time of launch clock, okay? Or we can write as launch launch clock arrival time okay which is nothing but t1 and what is our capture clock arrival time capture clock arrival time when we are getting it at t2 so now from this we can calculate skew which is nothing but capture clock arrival time minus launch clock arrival time which is nothing but t2 minus t1 okay. so this is how we will calculate the skew this is the positive skew okay. now coming to the negative skew now let's discuss the negative skew 
what is this negative square again we will draw this diagram using our d flip flops we will see so this is d1 q1 q1 bar d2 q2 and q2 bar okay so this is our uh, inputs and clock signal is given here now so in this uh, coming to the negative skew what happens is uh, the data direction the data direction and the clock direction and the clock direction are different okay so in case of negative skew what happens is the data direction and the clock direction are different so here in this example uh, let's assume the clock is moving from right to left and the data is moving from left to right so in this example let us consider clock is moving from left to sorry right to left and the data is moving from left to right okay this is the direction so since the direction of clock and data are different so it is called as negative skew okay so let us see from the origin point of clock is this so from here we are getting the data so the second flip flop will get the data first afterwards after the clock passes through some combinational logic like buffer it will reach the first flip flop okay so the flip flop 2 will get the data uh, clock first and the flip flop 1 will get the uh, clock second so this is the arrival time t1 is the arrival time of d2 and t2 is the arrival time of uh, d1 clock okay t1 is the arrival time of d2 clock uh, d2 flip flop and t2 is the arrival time of clock at d1 okay so i will write it here so t1 is for flip flop 2 arrival time of clock for flip flop 2 and t2 is the arrival time of flip flop 1 arrival time of clock at flip flop 1 okay like this so here you can observe the data direction is from d1 to d2 the data will pass through some combinational circuit and it will go to d2 but the clock is traveling from d2 to d1 okay so if the direction of data and the clock is different then it is called as a negative skew okay then we will get a negative skew now not in all the cases like this is a case we are getting skew okay uh, bef uh, because of this uh, combinational logic uh, present in the clock uh, uh, path we are getting a skew okay but what type of skew which is uh, which is decided by our clock and data okay now coming to the skew calculation what is it skew is nothing but capture clock arrival time capture clock arrival time minus launch clock arrival time okay so what is capture clock arrival time which is nothing but t1 and what is launch clock arrival time which is nothing but t2 t1 minus t2 which is negative skew so with the help of waveform we will see so t2 we should get first right sorry we should get t1 first so for d uh, for d2 flip flop we will get the clock like this so this is for d2 flip flop this is time t1 okay so for d2 flip flop we will get the clock somewhere here with some delay okay So this is how we will get the at t2 this is for d1 flip flop so you can observe the delay here so this delay is called negative skew okay. i hope it is clear so this is the positive skew and negative skew uh, in our clock uncertainties now we also have uh, one more type uh, categorized that is called local and global skew now let us see in uh, detail about that so we have two types again categorized one is called local skew 
and other is called global skew. Now let's see what is this local skew and global skew. So let's say we have three flip-flops. One is D flip-flop. We'll consider the D flip-flops only D1, Q1, Q1 bar, D2, Q2, Q2 bar and D3, Q3, Q3 bar. So we have clocks for every flip-flop and let's say our clock origin point is this. So clock is given from this point only. So from here, let's say it is given through a buffer or let's say it is given through a NOT gate. So it is given to flip-flop one and flip-flop okay and this is given through another buffer to flip-flop 3 okay now so this is uh, so in this uh, particular circuit the data direction is this right now so the flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 2 will get the uh, same clock after passing this combinational circuit so here clock is uh, given to this flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 2 after passing only one combinational circuit and flip-flop 3 is given uh, like this. So the clock will be given through this combinational circuit after passing this combinational circuit. You can observe the same clock is given to flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 2 after passing this combinational circuit. Okay. Here from this the uh, two flip-flops are getting the same clock. Okay. And but this flip-flop 3 is getting a different clock local skew local skew is nothing but difference in the arrival time of clock signals at the clock pin of related flip flops so these two flip flops are related right so the arrival time of this two flip flops at2 let's say this is the arrival time of clock at this d2 flip flop and this is uh, 81 arrival time of clock at this d1 flip flop so the difference between the at2 and 81 is called local skew so this is called local skew and coming to the global skew, which is nothing but the difference in the arrival clock, arrival of clock signal at clock pin of non-related flip-flops. Okay, so this uh, two flip-flops are related to each other, right? Because uh, same clock after this combinational circuit, same clock is given. So this is related, and this will be different from this two flip-flops. So the arrival time of this uh, flip-flop minus the arrival time of this related flip-flops is called as global skew okay it's known as global skew so this is the local skew and global skew this is how we will calculate the local skew and global skew now, in this you can observe so in the case of uh, skew you can observe uh, whether it may be a positive skew or negative skew you can observe that phase is getting deferred so phase is getting deferred in the two flip-flops in the clock signals of two flip-flops right so only phase is getting deferred right but frequency is not getting deferred frequency is same frequency is same only the phase is getting deferred right in the case of skew only the phase is getting deferred whereas frequency is same okay yeah now let's discuss one more concept which is called as jitter So what is this jitter? Jitter is nothing but the frequency variation in the clock source. Jitter is nothing but the frequency variation in the clock source. So what is this? Let's see. So let's say we have a clock like this. This is the clock which we want with a time period, let's say T1. So this is the ideal clock which we want. But what happens due to this jitter, the time period of this clock changes. Let's say it might be decreased to T2 like this. 
और इट माइट बी चेंज इट टू टीटो लाइक दिस और इट माइट बी चेंज इट टू टी थ्री लाइक दिस so the time period may be changed like this so this is the time period of second clock or this is the time period of third clock so change in the time period also represents change in frequency right so this is the jitter so the change in frequency or change in time period from the actual clock is known as jitter so there will be a difference uh, so it may be like this so you can observe the difference here so this is the actual time period we want but this is what we are getting due to the jitter or this is also t3 uh, we are getting so this is the jitter so in case of jitter you can observe there is a change in frequency there is a change in frequency whereas in case of first queue there is no change in frequency so jitter mainly occurs due to uh, power supply noise and variations in the temperature uh, these are the main sources for jitter so these are the clock uncertainties uh, which are present which we have discussed in our session one is q jitter latency are the clock uncertainties so yeah so that's all for this session thank you